Much like the VA and the FHA, the U.S. Department of Agriculture also backs mortgages to help people buy primary residences. Loans insured by the USDA are tailored for people looking to buy in more rural areas. The government-backed USDA program offers many of the same benefits of a VA loan, but it also has some drawbacks that VA loans don't. So let's take a closer look at USDA loans. Just like with VA loans, USDA loans allow qualified buyers to purchase with no down payment. That's a potentially huge benefit for buyers who don't want to spend years and years and years saving for that down payment. Now, USDA loans, like the other mortgages out there, don't have a built-in credit score requirement. But most USDA lenders will have a minimum score that you'll need to hit. That benchmark can vary depending on the lender you're talking to and other factors, but right now, USDA lenders are typically looking for a credit score around 640. In terms of eligibility for a USDA loan, that's gonna be based in part on your location, on where you're looking to buy. So you'll need to purchase a home in what the USDA considers a qualified rural area. Now, a surprising portion of the country meets that designation, but you'll absolutely wanna check with the USDA for more details. The maps and what defines what's qualified and what isn't, those can change every year. Now, you wouldn't be able to use a USDA loan to buy a home in or near most big cities. This is about qualified rural areas. Now, something that VA and FHA loans don't have is an income cap. USDA loans have an income cap. That means that you could actually make too much money to qualify for one of these loans. So USDA borrowers can have an income of up to 115% of the area's median income adjusted for family size. You can find the income caps for your area on the USDA's website. Now, one way that USDA and FHA loans are alike is that they both come with mortgage insurance. And USDA, just like FHA, has both an upfront and an annual mortgage insurance premium. So the, right now, the upfront fee for USDA loans is 2.75% of the loan. Now, on a $250,000 loan, let's say, an upfront fee of nearly $7,000, that's that 250 times that figure, that gets added to your loan balance. So it's not money that you have to bring in cash to the closing table, but you end up borrowing more money. Now, in addition, you've got this annual mortgage premium to contend with. For USDA loans right now, this fee is one half of a percent of the remaining loan balance. So on that same $250,000 loan, the typical USDA borrower starts with an annual fee of about $1,300, which divided by 12 comes out to about $110 a month you're paying on top of your mortgage payment. Okay? A benefit of USDA loans, though, is that they allow buyers to finance all of their closing costs, all of them, up to 100% of the home's appraised value. And we'll talk quickly about what that means. So let's say that you get under contract to buy a home for $150,000. Okay, and your closing costs are five grand, let's say. So you need this home to appraise for at least $155,000 in order to finance your closing costs. Otherwise, sellers on a USDA transaction are allowed to contribute up to 6% towards your closing costs and concessions. And that's a big benefit as well. So USDA buyers can also use verified gift funds to cover their closing costs just like with other loan types out there. Now last, this is another big benefit too. USDA loans are assumable, but most of these are what are known as new rate and term assumptions. And that means that the person who's assuming a loan does not get the same interest rate that you have. So generally the only time that the interest rate and the mortgage terms would stay the same is when a family member is assuming your USDA loan. And that's a brief look at USDA home loans.